Hi. As we close out this introductory part of our video training where we're just trying to give you an overview of what commercialization is, I want to go back over what we've learned and then sort of wrap it up for you. Remember we started out and said, who's the end user? Who's that person wearing those funny glasses with the little mitt on the end of it where you're going to take that ball and try and catch the ball in the glasses? Hey, that person's me. I'm the person who's touching it, wearing the glasses. I am the end user. I know something about me. I know my education. I know my skill levels. I know a bunch of stuff about me, my capabilities, so on and so forth. If I'm doing a different thing, like I'm going in to manufacture a foam piece and I want to bring a new manufacturing technology into a factory where a bunch of uh, uh, factory uh, manufacturing uh, workers are going to use it, it with direct numerical control machinery, then I want to know who they are, what their skill levels are, things like that. I want to know what they're doing. In this case of this, I'm just playing a game. In this case, what they're doing is running a bunch of direct numerical control machinery. I want to know why they're doing it. Me, I'm doing it to have fun. That's the utility for me. They're doing it because they want to make these foam things and they want to do it as cheaply and fast as possible. I'm not necessarily in a, in a hurry to do this. I'm just trying to entertain myself. Uh, so we have different goals depending upon the practice that we're involved in. I want to know where they're doing it. The factory environment's a lot dirtier than my house where I'm playing with this. If I'm going to be in a factory, uh, unless it's a clean room, it's probably dirtier. So whatever I'm bringing in, if I'm bringing a new machine in, it has to be more robust probably, be able to handle a different kind of environment. If it needs a special kind of electricity, low harmonics, for example, I have to make sure that infrastructure is in place. Or if it's an optical table it needs, I have to make sure there's not, there's not too much vibration in the area. I may have to uh, create a uh, special kind of building that has low vibration or whatever. And I need to know when it's being done. Is it being done once? It's only being done for a little while. So if this thing lasts me a month and then it breaks, I don't care if it's I'm bored with it by that time. But if I'm buying a piece of machinery to make these by the millions and it breaks in a month, I'm really upset. Now, when I know what my end user uh, wants in terms of the five W's, where they are, who they are, what, they, what they're doing, why they're doing it, where they're doing it, when they're doing it, I can begin to determine the price, performance, ease of use mix that will be the metrics that will determine what products have a competitive advantage for this end user. And if that competitive advantage uh, is sustainable over time. And in order to determine that, I look at market forces which will skew buying behavior by either pulling it closer in time, pushing it away, somehow shaping that Gaussian distribution of buying behavior curve in different uh, shapes. Um, I can also look at market barriers which in certain periods of time may slice off customer segments so they're not even in the market. Uh, an example of a market force might be the enforcement of regulations. An example of a uh, the more stringent the enforcement, the more people take them seriously, the more that may skew buying behavior because they're uh, uh, not going to buy technologies that pollute if they know they're going to be, be fine for doing it. If they're not going to be fine, they may buy them. Um, so I have to think about a whole, that's a market force, a market barrier might be uh, the introduction of a superior technology which I can't overcome. It just slices out. You know, here's an iPod uh, that uh, I finally bought one because all my kids have one. I actually like the thing. So the introduction of the iPod may uh, ultimately uh, replace for me buying lots of CDs because now I'm just buying them in digital format that they go on my iPod, uh, so on and so forth. Anyways, if I can have a sustainable competitive advantage over time with my technology, then I can sell it to this end user. I have to, of course, figure out the launch tactics, but I can sell it to them. And if I can sell it to them, odds are if I'm selling it to them for enough money that there's profits to be made, somewhere along the supply chain, I will find somebody who wants to do a deal in order to acquire the technology because they would like to exploit that opportunity to make profit. Okay, what are the steps in getting a product to market? Let's sort of summarize what we've just said. Well, there's an old saying in, in this area, which is, think backwards, act forward. What we're really saying is this. If I want to do a deal, 
That's my goal, is to do a deal. Then in order to do a deal, I need a target who is willing to do a deal with me. But in order to find the target, I need to figure out how to sell the technology because the target is not interested in technology. The target is interested in making money by selling things to customers. Even if they're way up the supply chain and it's not the ultimate consumer they're selling to, they are selling to other companies who sell to other companies who sell to other companies and sooner or later somebody sells to the end user. But uh, the economy is based upon selling. So the target has to know it can, if it acquires this technology, it can make money off of it. And if it can't sell a product or make products cheaper, faster, better, so it can sell them more easily, why would it acquire it? And so I have to have a target who can sell. And when I have this, I, I say, well, if they're going to sell, then I have to figure out you know, who they're going to sell to and how they're going to sell it. So I have to figure out both the launch tactics which are the four P's, the product, and notice the product may not just be a piece of foam or a funny piece of glass. It may be everything that goes with it to provide a complete solution. In other words, those funny glasses don't work for me unless it has both the ball and the, and the string. I don't need instructions. On the other hand, a piece of equipment, direct numerical control machinery, that will uh, make this kind of foam in the same way that your dentist makes a cap with a rapid prototyping light machine uh, may not be a common occurrence in the factory. So when I look at this, who's using it, they may need some training. And if I look at where they're using it in a machine shop, for example, if it's going into a, mach a machine shop kind of environment, it may be a dirty environment. Uh, there may be uh, filings or dust and I have to make sure that the machine is robust enough to handle that and so if it's uh, people may be concerned gee I don't know you know we want training and we want a warranty to make sure that we're not going to buy this and it's going to break in a month we're buying the funny glasses you don't care if they break in a month because you're bored with them so that's the product then I got to figure out what the price should be which includes all that stuff broken out I have to figure out how to position the product, what's the value proposition for it, that is, what's the, how do I explain that it has a superior price uh, performance and ease of use over its competitors. And I also have to uh, figure out how I'm going to place it, which is how I'm going to sell it and also distribute it and get it into your hands. But if I'm going to do that, well then I really have to understand uh, what other substitutes are out there in the market, what's the competition, subs Toots. My mom always said I couldn't spell well, and she was right. Uh, I have to figure out the substitutes in the competition. And when I'm looking at competition, I can't only look at things that are, that are directly the same. Take this. It's a magic marker. Now, if this magic marker is made, well, here's one that's made by a different company. There's a substitute. You know, see, it even looks different. It has a slightly different look feel to it. But these are direct competitors, but a big, thick black crayon might be a, com a competitor for this. So I have to look at the whole range of competitors, and often there's a lot of different ways you can solve the same problem. Take measuring the distance to the wall. I can measure it with, uh, by walking it off with my feet. Sometimes uh, manual labor is a competitor. I can measure it by um, uh, taking a yardstick and flipping it over, or a ruler. I can measure it with a tape measure. I can measure it with an acoustic device. Hello, 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 hello. We'll measure the time of flight. Or I can measure it optically by shooting a photon beam at it. Beam it up, Scotty, boom. You know, there it goes back and forth. I measure the time of flight and I know how far it is to the wall. All of those are competitors to each other if my goal is to measure the distance to the wall. And some are more attractive than others depending upon how accurate I need the distance to the wall, how fast I need to get it, why I'm doing it, how often I'm going to do it, and so on. 